Greetings my guardians, Viking Gamer here, and today we're gonna do things slightly differently. Uh, today I won't be gaming, just talking. Well, because everyone's just dying to know my opinion, obviously. Duh. For those of you who might have watched my uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla livestream, uh, you would have seen my little rant when uh, Freya was shown as a wife of Odin, or Harvey, as the name they used. Before we begin though, I will just say a little disclaimer. I'm no scholar by any means, just a random dude on the internet who is trying to understand his ancestors and gods as best he can. If you would like a more scholarly approach to the subject, I can recommend Dr. Jason Crawford's video on it. Uh, I will put a link in the description. Now to the actual topic at hand. In God of War, you encounter Freya relatively early in a story, where she's said to have married Odin in a political marriage, who then sometimes referred to her as Freak, as her nickname. Now considering the numerous other quote-unquote law mistakes in the game, on which I might expand in a future video should interest be there, I just wrote it off as an artistic license. Uh, but then I played Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where Frigg is not mentioned at all, as only Freya is wife of Harvey, aka Odin, and that's all. And well, we've already seen my reaction to that. But once again, it's just a game, so whatever, right? But then, as I was reading a book called The Anglo-Saxon World, the author, an educated scholar, mentions Freya as the origin of the name for Friday, when everyone knows it's Freak. Well, that's where I lost my shit and decided to look into it myself. So this is how it's gonna go. Firstly, I'll mention which source mentions what, then I'll compare the similarities and differences between the two, and lastly I'll cover the quote-unquote results. First and foremost source is of course the Poets Egeda, where Frigg and Freya are clearly distinguished as two separate entities. In the poem Loki's Quarrel, or Taunts, depending on the translation, a fierce argument breaks out between Loki and the AC. Now without going into too much detail, it went a little something like this. Should I call you Mr? Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay. Shut up, whore! My mom is not a whore! Yes, she is! Ah. Basically, the AC are accusing Loki of being a degenerate who allowed himself to be penetrated by a horse and subsequently giving birth to an eight-legged horse. And Loki counters by calling both Frigg and Freya a bunch of sluts, Frigg having banged her husband's two brothers while he was away, and Freya for spreading her legs for every single AC and elf in the Nine Realms, including her own brother. So, yeah, I mean, talk about an awkward family dinner. <laughs> Zero out of ten on the old Idealio scale. In the Prose Edda, which arguably is based on the poetic one, Freak and Freya are once again mentioned as two separate entities on numerous occasions. In the chapter describing individual goddesses, they are described as follows. Frigg is the foremost. She owns the dwelling called Fensalir, and it is splendid in all ways. Freya, along with Frigg, is the most noble. She married the men called Odd. Odd went travelling on distant paths while Freya remained behind, crying tears of red gold. Freya gave herself many names as she travelled among unknown peoples searching for Odd. In the chapter of Kennings, Kennings being uh, the poetic way of describing something or someone in Old Norse poetry, Freya can be referred to as the daughter of Njord, the sister of Frey, the wife of Odd, the possessor of those fallen in battle, the god of Vani, and the god whose weeping is beautiful. Freik can be referred to as the daughter of Fjorgin, the wife of Odin, the rival paramour of Earth, Queen of the Gods and Goddesses, and the Keeper of the Falcon's Feather Cloak. The Feather Cloak is actually really important because in the story of the theft of Idun, Loki borrows the falcon shape from Freya. So, 
despite the separation within the book, there is some evidence in there towards them being the same. With that said, let's move on to the comparison. Uh, I'm going to start with the easy one, the family trees. First is Frigg, who is shown as being a daughter of Fjörgin and an unknown mother, with some sources claiming Fjörgin his sister. There is not much known about the two, but according to some research into the Proto-Germanic language, it's possible that they make a duo of sky and earth, and Frigg is of course married to Odin. Second is Freya with Njord, a god of sea and fertility as the father, and his unknown sister as a mother. Once again, according to some linguistic evidence, she's sometimes presumed to be Nurthus, the mother earth, with Freya as her brother and Odd as her husband. Once again, this is purely a speculation, however the similarities are far too numerous to ignore, and as such I would say that their parents might be the same, as both feature a pairing of earth with that of other element, whether sea or sky. If it is indeed so, then Freya and or Freak is also a half-sister of Thor, whose parents are Odin and Earth. Talk about liking that big, fuck you know. I mean that would make Odin the belt holder of the ever so elusive Mighty Dota combo, so well done, high five. Now to their names and themselves and what they mean. Freya being first, the word comes from Proto-Germanic languages with Old Saxon Frua or Old High German Froa and together with the Old Norse version Freya they all mean lady. The word Freak derives from the Proto-Germanic Freyas meaning beloved or dear. Now to the parts of the world and life they're associated with Freak is associated with marriage, household, fertility, love, sexuality, wisdom and prophecy and she also possesses a set of falcon plumes used to shapeshift into bird form. Freya, on the other hand, is associated with beauty, sather, sather is a type of magic practiced in Norse societies, fertility, love, sex, war and gold and she also possesses a clock of falcon feathers. Okay, so let's summarize real quick. They both likely have Earth as a mother. They both are likely married to Odin. Although, here I would just like to mention that although it is not entirely impossible for Odin to be married to two separate goddesses, considering the type of man whore he is, in this case it's unlikely. Their names are if not at least somewhat complementary to each other, at the very least they don't they are not mutually exclusive. The pods of the world and life they're associated with bear way too many similarities. Although once again, that's not unheard of in Norse Pantheon, just state war, for example. There are at least five gods associated with war directly. However, the number is you know, the real number is a lot higher as most of the gods are at least indirectly linked to warfare in one form or another. As you can see, there's just way too many similarities to be just a coincidence, so I would say it's fair to presume that they are one and the same, at least in origin. So in conclusion, it's very likely that Frigg and Freya are indeed one and the same. Personally though, I somewhat subscribe to the theory which I have encountered during my studies. Historically, most scholars considered Frigg to be an aspect of Freya. Like Freya, Frigg is a vulva a practitioner of the magical art of Seder, and seeks the divine or alter the future through ritual. While the two goddesses are often presented as separate deities, they likely evolved from a single deity whose personality oscillates violently enough to merit separate identities. This may sound far-fetched, but what we need to take into consideration is that they are gods, not human. They simply do not subscribe to the same limitations as we do. More importantly, this quote-unquote split is also present in other religions. Take Christian Holy Trinity, for example. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are not names for different parts of God, but one name for God because three persons exist in God as one entity. With that said, let's answer the question for which you've clicked on this video to begin with. Where God of War and Assassin's Creed Valhalla wrong? 
Well, technically, no. God of War's claim to Frigg being Odin's nickname for Freya actually has some merit, mainly due to its meaning being beloved. And Assassin's Creed Valhalla's total lack of Frigg to begin with can also be justified. So yeah, I mean, multi-million corporations were able to commit resources and manpower to research the topic of their games. Who would have thought? Ultimately though, they're both games with established universes into which the topic needs to fit into rather than the other way around. So Kratos being the good guy, we need to justify him killing everyone. And with the gods of old being in fact members of the first civilization in AC universe, respectively. And at the end of the day, despite the occasional fit of rage, they're both well-made, enjoyable games with established fan bases. But what do you think? Do you agree or do you prefer a different explanation? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please do make sure to like and subscribe as it will help me to see whether this type of content is something that you guys might be interested in seeing in the future. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.